Welcome everybody to this edition of Attention Talk Video. I'm your host, ADHD and Attention Coach Jeff Copper. And today I'm here to talk to you about uh, the ADHD workspace, particularly desks where a person does work, uh, paperwork, that type of stuff. I did an interview uh, with Dr. Russell Barkley on Attention Talk Radio. Uh, for those that want to listen to it, it was one of probably what I would consider one of my better uh, interviews. Um, Dr. Barkley and I talked about basically uh, working memory. Uh, to listen to the uh, podcast, all you have to do is go to Google and just Google Attention Talk Radio GPS and it's going to come up. In that uh, interview, we really talked about uh, uh, what working memory is, how it's an executive functioning, and the challenges it, uh, it brings to those with ADHD. As we transitioned from Dr. Barkley's research and him as the expert, and I do consider him one of the foremost experts in the world, uh, we translated that into some of the things that I've done working with people with ADHD um, to help uh, make uh, it easier for a person's uh, working memory, uh, which, by the way, actually helps self-regulation. Um, and so we kind of talked our way through it, and, and it was fun because at the end of the video, we kind of concluded that uh, paper sometimes is high-tech for those with ADHD. Anyway, today I'm here to talk to you about the ADHD workspace, and uh, particularly with working memory in mind. Uh, particularly for college students and for a lot of adults, uh, what I found recently is, is that uh, college students have a tendency to do all their work on a laptop, and it's very, very taxing to your working memory. More and more in the work environment now, we're starting to see multi-screens, two screens, sometimes three screens. That's very, very good because when you look up and you see um, something on one screen, you can have something open on the other screen and your eyes can dart back and forth between two things and relate them together. Whereas if you just have one screen, you've got to look at it, then you've got to toggle and you've got to give yourself instructions. You've got to remember what you read. You've got to scroll down to find what you're looking for. That's taxing to your working memory and often you forget what the heck you read at the beginning of it. So number one is multi-screens. That's very, uh, it's, it help, it's less taxing on the working memory. So it's a really, really good tool, particularly for college students. And I don't see a lot of that out there. The other thing too is workspace. Um, often those with ADHD will go into their living room, uh, or excuse me, the dining room, excuse me, and they'll put their taxes out of the, some project. And the reason for that is, is they need to spread some things out. Um, they instinctively go there because it's less taxing to the working memory. Um, I've often thought that when you uh, when you have a person with ADHD in your, your design office, they almost need to have a horseshoe uh, where there's a desk on the side, a computer at the end, and a desk on a side, and they should have a printer where they can touch. So basically, everything is within an arm's distance from them. So they can spread some things out. Typically, those with ADHD have, um, or not typically, often they have a lot of things that are out, a lot of what looks like clutter. They know things on the, maybe the right side of the desk is personal and the left side is maybe business related type stuff. There is some organization to it, although they, they, they claim they're disorganized just because it doesn't look very neat. What I have found often people with ADHD, when they have stuff on the floor in and around their desk, it's because they don't have enough table space. And this notion of a horseshoe-ish type uh, desk where there's a couple monitors at the end is very, very um, uh, friendly to a person's work and memory. There's areas to spread some things out. In addition to that... Having a printer, a high-speed black and white printer, I recommend. Uh, mine, I get 5,000 pages off of a, a toner cartridge for about $60, and I go through it um, because I have to print everything off and I'd be able to, to see it. Even some emails, sometimes I'll print them off before I actually go and do some type of responding because I can actually read the email um, in printed form and respond to the email. So uh, this is... This is one of the things that I constantly am finding myself coaching people where they say that they're, they're disorganized and they'll send me a picture of their area and it's just, it's overpiled because they don't have enough room to sprawl out. And the reason they have so many things out is because it's visual to them. It's less taxing to the working memory. Plus, many times things are out because they're a reminder of things that need to get done. So if they get up and walk away and they come back and they forget about something, there's a visual cue. Whereas if they put it away in a desk, a drawer, they might as well throw it away because out of sight is out of mind. So the point of the this video is really to give some insight that uh, if you have ADHD and you're going to work on a workspace, it's really good to begin to think of the ergonomics and the area that you're looking in and make it uh, working memory friendly. Uh, multiple sc screens um, so that you can have multiple things up and kind of a shoe, you uh, a horseshoe shaped desk. Now, you might not be able to buy that, but you put tables on both sides and have a printer so that you don't have to get up and go get things when they're printed. So I hope this gives you pause to think that uh, this is not a tip, a trick, or a strategy. It's really setting up the environment to make it less taxing on your working memory to make it easier to self-regulate. So I hope uh, this gave you pause uh, to think. 
Um, please subscribe to our channel by hitting the subscribe button right here and please leave comments. We're really interested um, if you've got uh, this type of a setup and it's working for you or if it's not, share. Or if you've got other ideas, please. Uh, your comments are always helpful to spawn new ideas uh, for uh, new shows to help you, the public. So with that, we hope you've enjoyed this edition of Attention Talk Video. Take care.